What's happening folks? How's it going? This podcast is sponsored by Alpha Fitness. Contact Alpha Fitness via the Buff Geek website at thebuffgeekpodcastblog.wordpress.com if you're interested in personal training, if you're interested in training programs, nutrition plans, or just want to follow someone that gives you daily motivation. Without further ado, let's go to the man of the hour, the man with the power, too sweet to be sour, and I forgot the rest. Sorry wrestling fans. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the Buff Geek here, and I am flying solo tonight because of reasons. But I will not only pollute your ears with my sexy voice. Pollute and sexy, I don't think that really works. You I'm, I, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that you understand what I mean. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just sitting here, all my lonesome, um, the boys aren't here, but I am going to call them to discuss the film we are reviewing this week, and that is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Technically the fourth film ever made for, uh, for the Star Wars franchise, but it's... Uh, it is the first one in terms of the storyline, even though some people, you know, don't want to dis- dis- disregard it. Um, I I quite like the prequels. In fact, the prequels hold a very special place in my heart because although the original Star Wars is my Star Wars, these ones are my Star Wars as well because I was always a fan of Star Wars and I used to read some of the comics and the graphic novels and buy some of the... the you know, you get used to get the annuals and it would tell you all about various various characters and lightsabers and this and that. This is before you had the internet, folks. We used to get those at Christmas time and stuff. So I would get those and I would always think, oh, if there's only another Star Wars film, I suppose I'll just go watch Star Wars again. I must watch Empire Strikes Back and Turn the Jedi, I don't know, 50 times or something like that. Um, and then suddenly a new Star Wars film comes out and it's still, it was 1999, it's still technically my youth, so they're kind of my Star Wars films. But... Um, I do know, obviously, there are problems with them. They're, they're, we're going to get into that, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to phone David real quick um, and I'm going to ask him what things he likes about the film and what he doesn't like about the film. It's probably it's probably going to be a short phone call. Um, that's just really up to him, um, but he's he's quite busy tonight with some, uh, some family stuff, so uh, it's very good of him to make some time for us. And we're also going to do the same with... Uh, Hashtag it's Steve, um, who I'll, I'll phone after this and we'll get some of their insights and then I'll go long form and babble on about a whole bunch of things and pollute your ears with my sexy voice. That's a call back to earlier, yo. Call back to earlier. Let's see if we can get this motherfucker and initiate. We are calling. Yeah, you guys can hear that. Hopefully it doesn't sound like trash, but I won't. I maybe won't do it too long because cause it might sound like trash. A sip of uh, Pepsi Max for the working man. Bongiorno! Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Do your do your signing. Do your signing now. <laughs> what up, guys? It's David here. I am back. Is that do it? Yes, that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I've got you close to the mic. In fact, you're maybe a little bit too close. I'm just going to play around with this. I suppose it depends on the energy you keep. Oh really? You got a cold? Hi. Pussy. <laughs> can I just uh, I, I, can I just say something real quick? Say something like anything. Anything, yeah. Um, I I saw you last Saturday driving uh, through the town. Did you? I did. Yes. Um, and it was it was on a it was on a length of road where I could see you drive for a wee bit of time, and you had your little girl in the back. You drive so differently with your little girl in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> it was like proper safety father driving. I was like, "What's that? Where's the where's where's boy racer aggro man?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
it's, it's a very different story when they're in the car. Yeah, I was just, it was just funny. I was like, that looks like him, but, but he's... There's the obvious safety reason, but also, like, it teaches them how to be as well, so... Of course, yeah, you need you need to pass on to them like like how to be a good person, how to drive correctly, not be a dick. As I say, not as I do. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So yeah. obviously you're you're tired, um, and you're 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 not feeling so great. You're under the weather, so kind of wanna wanna move it along a little bit. Um, as much as I really want to sit and chat to you, we're gonna do that hopefully Tuesday, an early podcast yes. next week. Um, so. Yeah, we're talking about the Phantom Menace, as you well know. Yeah, and I'm just been on YouTube. you have been on YouTube, yes. And would it be uh, would it be uh, reasonable for me to ask you if there are some things that you like about the film? Well, one thing that I've always liked about the film, and you may have already talked about it, is the Jewel of the Fates. You know, the song that's used when. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan are fighting Darth Maul at the end. <sighs> yes, it was used as the promotional um, it was used in the promotional trailer for it. Yeah. And it was, it's and absolutely it glorious. Awesome. I would say and you know, I've, I've literally I literally just put the podcast on. I was on the phone to my other half and because um, she's not better than me, damn it. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was just like, do you know, I better call David before he falls asleep. So I've not actually said anything apart from the fact we're talking about Star Wars: Phantom Menace. That's it. So it's fresh. But yeah, the the, the score that 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 soundtrack. No, sorry, that theme. What's it called? The theme score. Well, that song, you know, yeah, that theme. Yeah. yeah, that one in particular is amazing. It's yeah. so good. Great call. It's just so well used as well. I mean. The, the... The sort of the, the peril, the kind of tension in that scene, because you've seen this guy, this Sith fight, but not to the extent where he's got the, the dual wielder, and the, not the dual wielder, the dual blade, whatever you want to call it. The dual ended lightsaber? I can't remember what they call it. The double ended dildo, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. yeah. So they've got the double penetration thing going on, and then um, there's just this kind of, you, know, you don't know quite what's going to happen and obviously it doesn't end well for Qui-Gon he becomes like a a pincushion for him yeah pretty much but it's just such a brilliant scene I love that scene it is, it's got to be the coolest entrance it's 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 cooler than Darth Vader's entrance from Star Wars and New Hope I think and it, I think uh, it I think it might well be I can't even remember that I'm going to have to wait three weeks till first time we see Darth Vader yeah but then that won't be the first time. Yeah, but at that time they didn't know what they had, you know. So it was just yeah, he was kind of walking on. It's kind of cliched now as well, isn't it? Yeah, but the Jewel of the Fates is is probably my favorite Star Wars theme actually. It's a very very good one. I can't name any others apart from Imperial Death March and the main theme. See, the main theme actually actually kind of annoys me unless. It annoys me unless I'm watching it, which yeah, might might what you mean. it might be like a disappointment thing that I'm not watching it. But I find it just <laughs> I don't know if someone plays it for me like oh it's Star Wars I'm like yeah I don't like this one like all the other ones but not yeah. this one just to listen to. Mm-hmm. But hey, that's just me. So anything else that you like about the film? You like you like some double ended action? Yeah, I do. I like Darth Maul. I think he was brilliant. Um, I. Quite like the, the whole kind of passing the torch from Qui Gon to Obi Wan kind of thing, and you've seen Obi Wan as a total, like almost a pad. Is he a Padawan in this? Is he? Yeah, he's a he's a Padawan. He still has to take the trials. Yeah. So you, you see him in the early days and that. I love Jar Jar. <laughs> You're being funny, right? Yeah, very much. Um, and uh, again, going with the sort of the legacy thing, I love how it goes from Kirk to Picard. That's just amazing. Oh dear, he's got he's 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 tired already, and he's just trying to become a heel <laughs> and use the use the the jokes. Say eh? Kirk to Picard, fucking prick, honestly. <laughs> also, oh yes. Just while I remember, because I'll forget later. 
Happy birthday, Stu. Oh, happy birthday, Stu. Stu. Happy birthday, Stu, which... It's today, but it may be tomorrow or uh, yesterday time you listens to this. Uh, by the time it gets uploaded, probably. Probably. Yes. So, happy birthday, Stu. That's a, that's a double spoiler horn for the double lightsaber action, yo. Uh, yeah, you know, it, you know he it. loves that. Um, next time you d- decide to watch The Phantom Menace, or, or maybe this past time that you watched it so um, intently, d- did you f- f- um, take my recommendation to watch it with Jar Jar Binks as a villain in mind? I haven't watched it since we talked about that. Ah, okay, okay, fair enough, fair so, enough. that's a... Uh... It would be good to actually kind of look at that, but one of the things I struggle with with the Phantom Menace is the audio, generally. Okay. Because most of the voices, they were recorded, like, in a studio rather than when they were doing the scenes, weren't they? I didn't know that. I didn't... There's, there's something... I could be wrong, but there's something off about the voices at times, and it's just like... I don't know. Maybe I'm just wrong. It's just, you know... Again, like, especially Obi-Wan, he's quite deadpan all of the time, you know, it's, it's very kind of, he's almost quite flat at times. Oh, the, it the, yeah. It feels like it's not. Qui-Gon almost feel- is good all throughout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Palpatine's good all throughout, but yeah, Obi-Wan's lines do seem a bit funny. And the same with Padme's, but the thing is with Padme is that you've got to remember, she was using a decoy. Yes, Kira Knightley. So th- that's why it would maybe seem off sometimes, but you wouldn't yeah. know quite. You wouldn't quite know what was off. But I was watching it intently, and Kira Knightley really managed to form her mouth in the same way that um, that um, help me out here, that P- Padme, uh, Natalie, Portman. Natalie Portman did. Yep, that Natalie Portman did. So. Yes, Keir Knightley formed her mouth the same way as Natalie Portman. That is a sound bite. I want you all to enjoy it. Because <laughs> I did. Ha <laughs> ha. Me. <laughs> all right, well, is, is there any other bits and pieces that you want to drop? Or do you want to head off now? Or you want to hang some more? I don't want to keep you if you're dying, you know. I'm just trying to think. I don't think there's anything... Um, because I'm not a massive Star Wars fan, it's kind of like recalling like just a random movie that I've watched at some point. Um, obviously, you've got the introduction of Jar Jar, and you know, I, I just wish they'd stuck to that him being the villain. Well, if that if that indeed was I'll definitely the case, watch it again just for that. you should you should definitely watch it again for that. And it's funny how like almost dated it kind of looks at times, but other times you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. Like the big battle scene, you know, between the droids and the, the Gungans and whoever else. And it's like, wow, that, that's kind of epic. And then there's other bits and you're like, that looks lame. Yeah, I think sometimes... Just me though. Sometimes when... Th- I think the thing with the Gungans and the <laughs> droid army, I think the reason it works is because it's all CGI mm-hmm. and it's not in a it's not in an obvious room that's been uh, like a box yeah. you know whereas a lot of them most of the film was just green green screen green felt green everything a green ball sitting here meant to be a person you know and um, was it you that said to me that I, before that Natalie Portman gave well, like wanted to give up on acting after that because it was quite intense just acting to to like green screens and a green ball all the time. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I remember us talking about this. I thought it was you who told me that. Did I tell you that? I don't know. We're so terrible for this memory thing, aren't we? Or maybe Steve. Steve told both of us. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Steve got out his green balls and went. Yeah, and they're sick of looking at these. Yeah, exactly. But wouldn't you be? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Even when they're not green, I'm sick of looking at Steve's balls. Yeah, you guys are gym bros together, aren't you? <laughs> he squats, they pop out, he straightens up, they go back in. It's all good. It's all good. I'm gonna, that's why I wear tights, okay? That's why I wear tights in the gym. <laughs> it's like a punch bag. Yeah. Man tights. Speedball, that's it. Just, Speedball. just keep, keep, them, keep some cupped in there, 
cradled and you don't have to worry about anything popping out. You don't have to worry about the, the power nappy rolling up, rolling up your shorts so that you can actually squat in them because your thighs are too big. Stuff them in your ball bag. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh my word! Right, so you're gonna go. You're going to need to watch the um, Attack of the Clones before I see you on Tuesday. Attack of the Clones, got it. Will you manage that, sir? Uh, I'll give it a, 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 a yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure YouTube's got Attack of the Clones in four minutes. Oh my it. gosh! Well, I mean, if you could swing by my place, I can let you borrow my copy. Oh, it's fine. Don't worry. I have ways of acquiring things. I'll, uh, my brother. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. We'll see on Saturday. Oh, yeah, good point. Well, you better you better tell him to bring uh, the st- all the Star Wars films you need to watch and then just, like, backdate that Get shit, yo. Know? Bring them all. Right, I'm going to go phone Steve now and find out what his insights are, and then I'm going to ramble for a bit. Okay, ask him about his green balls. Um, okay, but I think he'll be really just confused <laughs> and he probably won't laugh. I wish we could have done a three-way. I should have got my other phone. Three-way call. Yeah. No, you can. no. technology sucks. We'll have to get Skype fixed. Yes, do that. Do that. Yes. Tech yeah. genius. Well, I've, got some, I've got some fellow Podern family guys willing to help out on that one, so hopefully we get somewhere with that. That'd be amazing. Then we could finally get some of those uh, more. What would you call them? Not that we're not famous, but like people who are you know kind of actually famous. Um, to I have more than four listeners. Yeah. Cut, come on the show and stuff, you know, and pump it up a little bit. <laughs> You want to see my office now, by the way. I've got that picture of Poison Ivy just right in front of me. Right. I will I will leave with that. Oh, by the way, um, you've got Netflix, right? Yeah. Yeah. See if you want like a, a, a reasonably short film, like an hour and a half film that's actually really good. Uh, check out Knock Knock. It's got Keanu Reeves in it. Keanu Reeves one? Yeah, it's actually brilliant. And um, the girl... Is it? psychological shit going on afterwards it does look quite good yeah well he he, he acts like he, like he does a really good job of acting like a dad and not just being Keanu Reeves so that's good for one <laughs> but there's the I didn't realise what realize are you going to do with those girls I'll kill them all I'll, I'll kill them all <laughs> that was good I hope it transfers well it sounded good to me um, what, one of the girls I didn't realise is the main is the is the girl from Blade Runner the hologram I just realised you've not seen it yet but she's my new favourite uh, thing she's my new favourite thing. Um, and you will watch this film and be like, me. <laughs> It'll also terrify you because you're a dad. But I have to prioritise Star Wars, obviously. Of course, yeah, yeah. Just just throwing it out there. Yeah. But all, for all the dads <laughs> listening, it'll be it'll scare you because you'll be like, oh, you know, when the wife's away or whatever, and then, these, then any hot girls come around the house just randomly, don't let them in. They're going to kill your ass. No, it's alright, you tie them up. Well, yeah, see, he didn't He didn't do that, but... <sighs> uh, see, you tie them up or break their legs. He was playing the nice guy card, you know? Jokes so, on him, then he deserves what he got. Silly Keanu. <laughs> right, you, I'm going to leave you alone to your dastardly deeds of breaking women's legs and being a creep. <laughs> do you want to do your sign-off? Yeah, I'm going to speak to Steve, he's nice. Do your sign-off, bitch. Okay. Right, I'll see you soon, bud. See you later, man. Ciao. Bye. Right, yo, well, that was David's opinion, and I um, think we can all agree that it's all shit, and he's not important. So, yep, that was fun. No, I'm just joking. <clears throat> I'm just trying to pop the boys that are listening to this, um, that are going to give me the feedback. You know, because you got to give me the feedback. You've got to participate. This is going to be a conversation between... It just so happens that you're getting to hear my voice, but I want the conversation to be both ways, and that's what I'm looking for here, you know, I want to hear from you guys. But, um, yeah, the score, what a good call, Ugh, what a prick, that should have been mine. Uh, Jewel of the Fitch is so fucking good, and I remember watching watching the, the trailer for Star Wars, um, and just being like, what the fuck, this is so awesome, with that theme tune, wow. And then, 
I think my friend found it online, like in two thousand one or whatever, when we 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 had a flat together. I remember him being like, "Check this out! I just found this thing." And he wasn't really into Star Wars or whatever, but he must have stumbled upon it and then thought I'd like it. And I was so happy to have heard it because it. Can you imagine wanting like not being able to just go? I want to listen to any song ever that ever existed ever now. Can you imagine that, folks? I mean, some of you can because you lived through that, but that's that's how it was. You know, just ten years ago. But now you don't even want for anything, and that means nothing. What does anything even matter anymore? That's a theological discussion for some other time. I'm going to phone Steve now and see what Steve's up to. <sighs> Hopefully that Pepsi Max is kicked in. Uh, Steve, 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 call, call, call. Do this. Man, you're ugly. That is an ugly-ass photo. <laughs> He's going to love that when he listens to it back. What's happening, yo? What's you happening? need to do your sign-in. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> you need to do your sign-in. You need to do my sign-in? Yes. Hashtag it, Steve. <laughs> Hashtag it, Steve. Brilliant. I just had David on. Well, I was, I was, it was, this was the week I was meant to be back for my one-off special. I and know. Then, uh, it all went horribly wrong because my good lady had to work late. So. <laughs> Damn uh, it. Honestly, people work, illnesses, David's got got the flu and he's got, you know, some big party thing he needs to arrange for this weekend. And busy man, you know, and sick. He, he gave a couple of feeble coughs. I think he just, uh, I think he just wanted to stay at home tonight and get some, you know. <laughs> he ain't getting nothing. He ain't getting shit. <laughs> He'd be better coming here. <laughs> I got the bitches coming round in 15 minutes. Woo! <laughs> So, <laughs> Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Yes. What so do you like about it? What do you not like about it? About already then. What's that? What have you been chit-chatting about already then? Well, I pretty much just uh, said to everyone that um, I'm going to call you guys up and then elaborate on all your ideas and steal all your shit. So, um, that I, works. I, cl- <laughs> I clued them in, first off, and uh, then David said... What do you think David's first thing to say about it? Bear in mind he's not watched it for a little bit. But what 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 would David's first thing be to say about Star Wars, The Phantom Menace? Uh, he'll he'll say something uh, probably something like, oh, "I'm not really a Star Wars fan." Blah blah blah. Okay. Yep. 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 And then, pro- uh, please God, he hope he didn't say something like he liked Jar Jar Binks or something. No, no, but he did say okay. he did say. He liked the score. <laughs> now, you know, I'm with him on that. <laughs> it's like if, if only, if only for the bit with uh, Darth Maul at the end when he's fighting Qui Gon and uh, and Obi Wan. Yeah, yeah. He said, "Jewel of the Fates is 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 amazing," and I was like, "You motherfucker! Yes. That should have been mine." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm getting three votes right away then. Yeah. <laughs> Me, you, and him. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, absolute highlight of the film. Yeah. Oh, I never asked him what his score for the film was. Well, that's silly. But he's not really uh, wa- he's not watched it recently though. No, I was pro- I, I want to say it was about a year ago. I I got the old uh, I got the original trilogy out and I've only got I've only got one and two. I don't actually have three. The Seth that's terrible. Um, but I sat and watched them with Zach. Okay. <laughs> so that was quite good fun. <laughs> but that was about a year ago now. So that's yeah, still probably I'm fresher sure than when he watched it. it. Well, they're always they're always due to watch at least one point every year, aren't they? So. Well, I think so. Yeah. Nicely, and it all went wrong with Blinking University. <laughs> what are you doing trying to better yourself? Myself. What are you? What are you doing? Trying to better yourself? How? How inconsiderate for the podcast? <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, how dare you? It's just, it's just, uh, just uh, you haven't got any pull, uh, you have any sway up at the uni at all, have you? You, you could like get them just to move it to a different night. <laughs> Which uni? Uh, Robert Gordon of Aberdeen. Um. <laughs> You just get on the phone to them and say, yo, 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 I need, I need my man Steve on a Thursday night. <laughs> Move that fucking lecture. <laughs> I used to date the um, the dean there. Uh, she was really nice, so I'll maybe give her a call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. 
and she actually she actually used she used to be a man and she had a sex change and I dated her through both of those things because I'm inclusive as fuck. <laughs> I didn't date her when she was a man, but <laughs> later on, because I'm inclusive. Yes, I have to be nowadays. <laughs> Fucking right. Fucking right. You know? <laughs> got to test that shit out, man. Got to test that shit out. Anyway, so we, we've got the score, obviously. Obviously, we like that. Mm-hmm. Um, did you... Not quite a lot of the casting was pretty on point. Um, particularly liked um, Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson. Did you like um, you, Ewan McGregor in this? Well. Um, well, not everybody. I mean, I, I wasn't fussed with. I'm not fussed with Natalie Portman at all. Christ. Natalie Portman so. is really bad unless it's. She's really bad if she's got to play any sort of sort of classic female role, like a princess or whatever, or the girlfriend, or you know mm-hmm. what I mean. Unless it's something that she. I mean, it's just not really a criticism, but mm. it's kind of like if you don't want to be a princess or the wife or the girlfriend or whatever, you know, don't take the fucking job. Do you do your little niche films? Like, I mean, I haven't. I I seen Black Swan once, and I know everyone raved about it. I was a bit like so so whatever, but you know, things like that that she wants to do and she does well in. It's just carry on doing that. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely, just niche films. I, I, Black Swans for me is fantastic. Um, yeah. Closer. I, watch I was a bit confused, but <laughs> were you? No, I, I just uh, I, I was really late at night, you know. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're not paying attention, one. that one's really tough because you're not quite sure: right. is it real or is it just in her head? You know. Yeah. Or is it just some art house mess? Rewatch at some point in my life, but there's so many things to watch <laughs> I, mean, I think I could sit and just binge watch TV for a whole year and still not have caught up <laughs> well according to Stu's stats oh by the way you need to wish Stu a happy birthday oh is it today? happy birthday well I think actually technically it'll be tomorrow by the time this goes up but yes it's a happy birthday Everybody's anyway listening to it. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean you might listen to it in three weeks time and you'll be like it's not my birthday today you fucks so it's either happy birthday today or yesterday or tomorrow or right about now Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, I would recommend yeah, that you... Yeah, some of stats about the amount of time you've watched films. Well, that's the thing. I mean, he's got three and a half days worth. Yeah, but, solid. <laughs> but that's just the films I've reviewed. Yeah, that's not everything else that you would watch. Yeah. Like, I've watched, I've watched probably double... The amount of films I've reviewed, I've probably watched double. And I've not mm-hmm. reviewed them. Plus all the wrestling I've not reviewed and TV series like FMA, for example, that I've not reviewed. So I would say I've probably spent about two weeks solid watching <laughs> watching content. Easy. Easy. It could be more than that, but yeah. How the it's fuck good. do I get anything else done? I don't know. <laughs> Apart- well, your, 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 Buffy po- your Buffy watching and your Buffy podcast, they must be time consuming at the minute. Yes, they are. Well, I, I, I am about to film, record part three of the Buffy podcast tonight. That's the plan, anyway. Um, what, season three has three parts? Yep. <laughs> oh, cool. I only started part one this morning. All right, well, so I, I went... I finished season two um, earlier on this week. I started season three this morning. I didn't, I didn't realise you watched Buffy, or you, or you were going to listen to those. I, yeah, well, I had, I had the first... Uh, Four series on VHS when they used to be released as a box set of three videos yep. and it was part one and part two and I had like the four of them when I was at uni uh, first four seasons um, I, I haven't watched I don't I don't think I watched five, six or seven though whatever so, no I have never <laughs> oh my <laughs> god it, so. oh I my need... so is it on Netflix? no it was but it's oh, not right. I'm going to need to lend you those yeah I was thinking yeah I'm pretty sure I, I was thinking about rewatching it yeah so oh, dude! I'll get right to it at some point. Five, five, and six. Six is amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's like it's like you know, season two, you get all that sweet pain. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was trying to remember bits of it. I mean, I watched it when it was when it was out, uh, but I haven't rewatched it since. I mean, that's what fifteen to eighteen years ago, roughly. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, you... so it's, it's, I'm a bit rusty, but there's little things you're talking about, and I'm like, oh yeah, I think I remember that, I think I remember that, and it's going to bring back some memories, which is pretty cool. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good, man. Yeah, season three needs to be three-parter, and I'm going to struggle oh, at, I'm going to struggle at that, actually. <laughs> Isn't part one and two already about two hours each? <laughs> yeah. You think you said yourself, you're like, man, nah, that's nah, episode one finish, and I'm already at 28 minutes. Oh, damn, here I go again. <laughs> I've been thinking that maybe maybe I'm going to have to do six episodes per podcast and do four parts for it, because there's just so much stuff going on. It's because there's a, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that happens in season three. Like, a, a lot, a lot. Like, I've been watching some other reviewer, and he's like, yeah... This season has almost got too much stuff ha- at one time, but it never it doesn't feel like they're just throwing it all works, but it's just so much goodness. Anyway, that's the next podcast. If you folks want to listen to that one, let's talk about Star Wars some more. Sorry. Yes. No, <laughs> um, <fine>. Okay. <laughs> so, so some yes, other things you liked like, about uh, it, then we'll do some other th- some things you don't. Well, it was only you know, I was sitting thinking about it, and it was only really one thing that I don't like that much about Phantom Menace and it's particular for Phantom Menace I think rather than, than any other Star Wars film and it's what I want to call it it just seemed very kiddified there was lots of bits in it particularly any scene with um, like mini Anakin Jake Lloyd yep. right where I mean child actors you know, they're very hit and miss as it is anyway so and he's a bit like yeah whatever so anything he's talking on screen and he's like oh yeah wow 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 wow, wow. Um, it's like something you'd get on CBBS. And then <laughs> you've got um, the whole Jar Jar like playing with the the Gungan bombs and accidentally blowing up everything when he's throwing them around and stuff. It, it just nonsense. I don't think there's any other Star Wars film where I look at it and there's as much kitty nonsense. I think he, it was almost like it was deliberately made. For the, it was definitely made for the family market. I get that, but I think he went way too towards, you know, way too towards a clean, clean PG borderline U, you know, film. Uh huh. Anyway, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Um, in terms of in terms of Jar Jar, um, and 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 the kiddiness of it, the the film was designed for his kids. He wanted to make a Star Wars film for his kids. They wanted one, and 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 that kind of spurned him on so I think maybe the, the place he was in his head at that point in time he yeah, probably wanted yeah, a child sense, to make it a little bit more identifiable for them yeah. also because definitely through one to two to three it gets sort of in vertical was darker and darker and I mean the original the original trilogy had a lot of really sort of nice um dark moments in it um and then the newer ones that are just now are they're definitely more adult P than kitty if that makes sense yeah absolutely yeah the first one that that one it really like jar jar was based on his dog <laughs> oh, the, the, the look of him and such and i used to hate phantom menace apart from the fight at the end because jar jar was so fucking bad and jake lloyd was was also pretty well he was, he was just doing kid acting you know but but watching yeah. it back recently there is a few bits in it where Jake Lloyd actually is okay. It seems to be... Yeah, I, I, I do remember when I rewatched it with Zach not so long ago. I, I, I say not so long ago, could have been a year, whatever it was. And I, I did remember watching it going, do you know what, this film gets a lot of hate, but it's not actually that bad. I've seen many worse films than this. That's the, is, it, is, it, is it a bad Star Wars film? Maybe. Hmm. Is it a bad film? I don't think so. I don't think it's a bad film. It's 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 not a, it's, it's not great. Else. That's the thing. Yeah, I think the problem is that it, it, Jake wasn't the best, but there is parts in it where he is actually quite reasonable. And I can't look at my notes right now because I've called you on WhatsApp because I'm a fucking idiot. But um, <laughs> there is parts when he's when he's not awful, and I think like the, the a lot of the actors doesn't they don't seem like they were given much direction. You know, it's like no, Qui Gon hits just his marks. Kind of loose script and said, "Go on, just you, you make the rest up. It's fine. Yeah, we'll just wing it and we'll just green screen half this shit and I'll add in some CG and it'll all be good." Well, the, George Lucas is notorious for for um, thinking thinking of his actors like um, not props, but 
you know, he's not super focused on the, the how they what say they things yeah. exactly. It's yeah, more. I mean, that, that was the thing. You know, obviously he, he was waiting. I think he always wanted to do more Star Wars films, but he felt he, he's doing almost like the James Cameron. He was waiting for technology to catch up to what he wanted to do. Yeah. And that's when he eventually got to what ninety seven when they started at principal photography, and he's like. Um, you know, I'm at a place now where I can actually make the films and add in the things I want to and the way I want it to be. Which is funny because you spent a lot of time in Phantom Menace with people sitting in circles talking about things. <laughs> yeah. Just lots of scenes of people talking. It just so happened they were aliens. Yeah, like, I think he just got like the script reading. You know, you know, do you remember when they did the uh, Force Awakens? Um, and they got everyone together for the first script reading through, and they always they released all the pictures of it in black and white. Yeah. You think, like, Lucas, that was, like, that was what Lucas did. He, he just filmed them all in the script room one day and goes, oh, yeah, I can build a film around this. That's fine. Fuck it, I'll make it now. I'm all good. Yeah, I, I reckon so. You're just like, do you know what? I've got most of the film already. <laughs> Fuck it. <Yeah. laughs> CG the rest of it. <laughs> well, apparently it was um, it was it was Jurassic Park that sold him on the fact that he should he could go yes. make one again. Yes. No, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've heard or, or read that as well. Yeah, definitely. And and, I, and it was, I mean, I think I think, I think Jurassic Park was a, a, a particular milestone. I'd, I'd, I'd almost maybe go as far as, say, as Terminator 2. Bits of that were pretty close to being, I mean, it was super groundbreaking at the time. I would say but so. Jurassic Park was, was, was almost like next level. I remember seeing that the first time and being like, fuck me, these things look actually real. It was amazing. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of the Star Wars stuff. I mean, the, the thing with it, me and David were speaking about it, and um, some of the CGI doesn't always look crisp compared to. I mean, it's twenty years ago, though. You know, almost thirty. Yeah, Is it? Was it's funny. It was groundbreaking at the time. I mean, I, 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 that was one of the things I was going to put down under lights was was at the time. The like the pod, the pod race, for example. Oh yeah. I don't think any of them be done even close to that level at the time it came out. I don't think anything's been done since then. The pod race is unbelievable. The pod race lo- looks real. Some of the it still it still holds up all right nowadays. I think it holds up perfectly really fine. <clears throat> um, in <clears throat> in terms of the the CGI, I think that the reason people can go, "Oh, that's not so great," there is because he's made fucking spaceships and aliens that you know that you don't really have a tangible <laughs> idea of how they look. You know. Like, if you make a, a T-Rex, everyone's got a rough idea of how it's meant to look. Or if you make a yes. fucking, like, a, a legit, like, CGI version of a car going through the air, it's going to yeah. be easier to, to buy that. But when yes. you know that that's really, like, a giant like a giant alien frog monster, like, you'll be able to pick parts <laughs> in it easier, you know? <clears throat> Are you talking about Jabba? <laughs> no, 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 just... just no, I was talking about actually. Oh, the... boss nasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian, blessed. Oh my god. <laughs> Me like. Yeah. Dude, he probably have a lot of fun with it. Brian Blessed seems like the kind of guy, I think he just puts like 110% into everything he does. He proper, over, he just goes overkill. And I feel, I think that's what he's probably, I get a feeling that's what he's like in real life. Well, according to Lee, he's, he's just, he just, that's just how he is. Because he met him and, and went to one of his, his um, talks and stuff like that. And I watched some uh, videos um, on YouTube about him, just talking about how he did the Star Wars films. And that's exactly what he did. He just he just approaches it with full-on gusto, you know? Give 120% effort all the time, constantly. And you can't be ashamed of your performance if you put in all that effort, you know? True, yes, true. And as much as he had that weird green, like, I didn't like the, the, the computer, the animation of the of Boss Nass. I didn't, I never liked the, the style. Mm-hmm. And I always thought it was weird that, that he looked different from all the other Gungans, you know? There's yeah. there's no other Gungan that looked like him. They all looked like Jar Jar, <laughs> which is kind of weird. But, um... I, I, have, have you ever... Well, you just watched it last year, and I don't know if you'd if you'd heard me talk about this at that point in time, but you should try and watch The Phantom Menace thinking about Jar Jar being a Sith Lord. Yes, the, yeah, this theory about um, that he was always meant to be the 
the main prota- protagonist? Antagonist. And he was meant to be the, the main antagonist for the first two films. He was meant... Yes. Like, that's why yeah. Count Dooku comes out of nowhere. He's going to be a Sith Lord and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because um, there was a, one of your mini episodes was, was about Jar Jar as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when you're talking about how he's running about chasing after the balls and making all these silly mistakes and being an idiot and that being really annoying, it's annoying when you think of him as as just face value. But if you think about what is he actually saying, what is he really trying to do, there's just so many scenes where he moves his hand in this weird manner. Or when he goes back to Gungan City, the Gungans all bolt. They all walk, they all, all walk away from him. Like, there's, like I don't want anything to do with this guy. If he's just a jester, they'd probably go up and kick his ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? But the, 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 so whether, they, whether he's been able to almost Jedi mind trick in the past or yeah. something similar, and they're like, no, nah, stay away from him. And they, <clears throat> they show you that Boss Nass can be, is susceptible to mind tricks because Qui-Gon uses, uses his trickery on him and later, later on when he's speaking to Jar Jar, Jar Jar keeps waving his hand and he keeps, you know, prom- like talking nicely about him and then he promotes him to general. And But the thing I noticed that this time around, because I've noticed so many things at different points, even when he speaks, his mouth moves in the background when other characters are being, like when Padme is being arsy to Qui-Gon, for example, his mouth moves. There's no reason for a CGI character's mouth to move. Like, that's expensive. It's not just like the actor was standing there, like, trying to be naturalistic and moving their face and just breathing and existing. Like, his mouth is literally moving. You had to actually make him do that. Yeah, Yeah, there's at least two points in the film. I'm going to have to watch this again and find a look for all these things now. Well, when uh, General Panaka, who is only in this one and then disappears, um, leaves the ship and escorts Padme, who we think is just a handmaiden, to Qui-Gon and Jar Jar and says, listen, the Queen wants this handmaiden to come with you and survey the planet. You can see Jar Jar in the background, his lips are moving. There's no need for them to move. And then there's another part later when Padme's RC to Qui-Gon and says, she says something about the Queen won't approve of this and Qui-Gon tells her, well, the Queen doesn't need to know. Well, I don't approve. And you can see Jar Jar's mouth moving again, but nothing being said. Like, You don't just do that. Um, and when he runs after the Gungan bombs, his hands are actually moving a lot. How much as he's panicking, they're actually moving up and down and pointing in various directions. <laughs> so if you watch it that way and then look at his big fucking yellow Sith eyes, it's like, oh, this film was going to be fucking amazing. <laughs> but then George Shadow, I mean, I fully believe that was the way it was meant to be. <laughs> but yeah. Yes, I think he, he filmed them independently, and because he, 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 I think he wanted to see the reaction. Yes, yeah, yeah. So he could change stuff for as he went. And obviously, he hadn't chosen. He hadn't found Anakin yet, like a teenage slash adult Anakin. Mm-hmm. So he didn't know what was going to what he was going to do with that. I mean, I I don't know if they, excuse me, I think it is kind of weird that they started with Jake so young. Like they would probably would have been better if they started. If they just found very quickly Anakin and then moved on to sort of teenage, teenage Hayden Christensen doing various yeah. things, and it would have created more pacing. And the third film should have really been, you know, the all about him being Darth Vader now. Maybe he turns in the yeah. second one, that's Revenge of the Sith, and then the third one is Darth Vader being a dick. But I think maybe at that time, it was too hard to think about having a, a like when he's Darth Vader, he's the villain, to having a straight up yeah. villain film. Whereas now it will totally sell. Then oh, it would have yeah, sold yeah. as well. Had they, had they done it now that you're right, that's how they would have done it. Like, it would have been hard for him to, 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 to market it before, you know? <laughs> but now it'll, it would work better because audiences are more refined now in <laughs> what they expect from their storytelling. Yeah. So, totally. so you agree with the, you agree with the, the, the score and certainly Jewel of the Fates, which was totally yeah. fresh for that. You um obviously everyone loves loves like the lightsaber fight. Yeah. Um, dislike Jar Jar and Jake Lloyd, which I think is most people's kind of point with that, and and sort of the pacing of the film. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, I think there's a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of filler, a lot of nothing happening at some point. They could they could have cut it and you know sped it up a bit. 
Like, as much as the pod race is cool, it's not that important. No, no. It's quite it's, long. It's a big chunk of the film. I mean, and everything to do with it. It's long and expensive. I mean, obviously, George Lucas likes racing. <laughs> Stuff that goes fast. Because <laughs> yeah. he, spent, he spent a fucking shit ton of money on that. Yeah. An absolute shit ton of money. In terms of the cast, I think the cast is 50-50. Like, Qui-Gon's uh-huh. amazing. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yes, yes. I'm with you, yeah, yeah. And, and so is, um, I've forgotten who who plays Emperor Palpatine now, but... He, uh, Ian McDermott. Ian McDermott, there we go, yeah. he's he. They, both of them are just brilliant. But then Padme is a bit flat, and Ewan McGregor is... He's not good in this one. He's good in the other no, no, two. Yeah, he, gets, yeah he, does, he does get better. But, I mean, I was happy with him. I, I, I totally bought him from point one. Really? I, do, I still don't. I don't buy him until... Um, Attack of the Clones until he really develops that super English like ness ness of himself. You know, he seems like he really finds his footing. I don't think he was given much direction in the first one. Yeah. It's a little bit flatter. It's a little no, bit. No, I'll, I'll look out for that when I rewatch back. I'll, I'll put more of a um, open mind on on you and see what he's like. Just to think about Ewan in that one to attack the clones and it could almost be a completely different character or actor. <laughs> like it straight up could be. I, I actually I do like I do like Padme's performance in this one though. Like I like when she puts on that weird English accent and she's got all the crazy robes and makeup. I think that's so iconic and f- like so good. Oh yeah, it's from you know from from uh, costume design, set design, and, and and that point of view, absolutely. I think yeah. that's kind of there's almost an element of um, it, it invaded pop culture. Yes, I certainly, think certainly Darth Maul. I mean, God, he's 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 going down in infamy. Yeah, I think Phantom Menace did have a lot of pop culture um, impacts compared to compared to clo- Clone Wars is probably, in a lot of ways, my least favourite. Because mm-hmm. although Fat Menace can, can be a bit slow, I still yeah. always get that excitement factor that it's the new Star Wars. I remember going to the cinema multiple times to see it. I think that was it. I think it was the long wait, and then they were making it, and it was like, hurry up and get here, up and get here. And, and that kind of helped it in a lot of ways. I mean, it helped. It helped its, almost, its downfall at an equal measure. But I think it still helped, even in time, People are still excited about it because it's like, yes, we're getting another one. Yeah. You know, and I think, and funnily enough, I think over time, maybe that it might sound harsh to say that now because you need longer to to figure it out. But in retrospect, people might think that about Force Awakens as well. Yeah, there's there's some bits in Force Awakens that I, I dislike quite heavily. I mm-hmm. don't like I don't like Ray, um, mm-hmm. and I the scene where they've got the giant swirling monsters, I can't remember what they're called, and they've got the, the Conja Club and all this kind of shit when they meet Han Solo, that was just not necessary. Um, I I actually don't like the fact that they basically just redo the Death Star straight up. But otherwise, I mean, there's a lot of good in the film as well, but it was a very, it was a very safe film to do, whereas the prequels were not similar to the originals at all and no, no. they were very risky yeah. so George took a big risk with those ones with the storytelling and the dynamic of them and especially yes. it was much more of a political drama but he didn't he didn't quite get the, the quality acting from everyone or managed it's like he wanted the political drama but also tried to make it a kids film and he didn't quite get either the balance right yeah yeah, kind of stuck in the in the middle of, of both, and, and it, it not really hitting it on on either side. Which would be boring for kids who are like, oh they're speaking again. Boring for adults because yeah. they're not going deep, <laughs> and then boring for adults because they've got kids running about being fucking kids again. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so being as you are a Star Wars fan and you've watched it like, a good few times, um, what sort of what sort of rating would you give this one? Do you think? Which will be retconned at the end of it because we'll have all the Star Wars films in yeah. retrospect, of course. Oh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, you know, see, with MCU, I had a pretty firm order in my head and I decided that at the beginning and even after watching it, there was nothing really that I moved around. 
I'm not so sure on the Star Wars. I've got a funny feeling I could do like what you guys did and actually rewatching stuff again, moving them and go, oh, right, maybe that's slightly better than that. I, uh, let's let's stick a let's stick a seven on it. I think let's stick a seven and seven out of ten on it for now. Okay. But it's, it may get retconned. It may move a teeny bit depending on everything else. Yeah. Um. I'm probably going to go and talk some more about some points that we mentioned, <clears throat> um, but I'm thinking as well that it's probably about a seven for yeah. me um, because it's I, not top tier. It no, ain't any, it ain't getting over eight for sure. No, no, um, but well, it's still know, pretty I good. I think it needs to be any lower. So, yeah. Especially when you watch it every fucking year, you know. What I mean, it can't go much lower than a seven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you, if you compare it against any other, I mean, like I gave Thor: The Dark World what six and a half as a comparison. So, I mean, yeah, it's better than that. Oh so, yeah, good point. Yeah, so fuck. See, so, so, yeah, that's it. You, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to match them up against the MCU and. <laughs> oh no! Just, just so I've got a fairly sensible pick in order and more in the head. It's, I'm it's, happy with. it's going to get so complicated. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'll leave you with that nugget then. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will. I will mull over that. Um, and I'm going to go and look at my notes now and see if there's anything that I want to elaborate on. Or I think I want to talk about lightsaber forms and stuff like that. And just go the a little jewel, bit deep. The jewel blade. Oh, oh yes. Oh, well, do you remember that, fucking... That moment where the doors open and he turns the lightsaber on. And then it turns sideways, and the other half comes out. I was just like, I was so giddy. The goosebumps were absolutely bouncing. For like, yes. for newer newer fans of Star Wars, um, and maybe or maybe for the older fans of Star Wars, it's basically that Rogue One scene with Darth Vader, right? Yes, it is. Oh, you fucking hit the nail on the head with that one. It totally. I mean, I mean, I've got goosebumps now thinking about Vader. But it, you're you're right. You're right. It is. It is. It was the equivalent for us at that point. Yeah. Although it's yeah, probably it not. Totally. It's probably not as good as that one, because. No, 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 no. I, I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll absolutely put it. The, the Vader scene in Rogue One was just like. I mean, the Vader scene oh, in Rogue One is. It was just like, oh my god, this film has just like skyrocketed. I mean, it was already a great film. And just that wee nugget at the end, I was just like, oh my god, I fucking love this film now. It's. I don't want to. Well, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say something. I was going to say something, but I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say it later. Um, <laughs> Keep it for the Rogue One special. Yeah, but that, 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 that scene with, with Darth Vader is basically a 10. But, yeah. No, yeah. And the scene with Darth Maul is like. Fucking nine point seven five. I just think the Darth Vader one's just a little bit yeah. better, or it's like a ten and a ten A. You know, like ten yeah, plus. Yeah. <laughs> like they're both yeah. so perfect. Can we? We'll rate that. We'll rate them. We'll take those scenes out and rate them themselves. Set them on top. <laughs> yeah, they are the best things ever. And then we've got the rest of the film. We'll just set as a seven S because it, it did some other bits, but you take that bit out of it and yeah, it falls apart. <laughs> Yeah, well, I would probably Phantom Menace would be hard to watch without without that scene, without Qui Gon holding that fucking. Do you know what? Liam Neeson must be an incredible actor. Same with Ian McDermott, because um, George Lucas doesn't give much direction to his actors, so those guys are just fucking quality all the way through. You know, you would never know it was in a quote unquote Star Wars like sci fi fantasy film. You know, those guys were fucking acting. Natalie Portman. <laughs> right, man, I'm going to go and vibe about a couple of things and then I'm going to yeah. see if I can do this Buffy podcast in two hours or less. <laughs> Good job, you did. Okay, you too, man. Give your sign off. Do your sign off. Uh, yeah, so you'll catch me on uh, at Wise Pranker on Twitter, uh, which is my most followed thing at the moment. I hit five and a half thousand followers recently. You whore! Nice. You whore! <laughs> <laughs> Probably like three real people and, and you know five thousand four hundred ninety seven bots. But hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, but you can catch me at uh, Stephen Housraff on uh, the Facebooks and the, and the Instagrams as well. Brilliant, awesome. I will. Uh, Sorry, we'll man. we'll probably me and David are planning to meet on Tuesday next week randomly and discuss Ooh. Attack of the Clones. So maybe. Ooh. I, right, yeah, let, let's see if I can wangle some magic because it's not, it's Wednesday and Thursdays is uni nights. Well, so, yeah. 
Well, David said to me that he won't be working Tuesday soon, but this Tuesday he suggested to me out of the blue, so... That would be Attack right. of the Clones. What would that be? Attack of the Clones? Attack of the right, Clones. Which I, have, which I have and I can watch in time, because I can get that watched this weekend, so yeah. yes, that, that could work. Um, th- th- and then I think we're going to need to double up for a couple of weeks. I don't know, I need to speak with David as well, because he's on holiday for a week yeah, and I'm on holiday for a week, way. so... You know, I think we need a, yes. a three-way conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, Tuesday. Cool. Think about it. All right, bud. Okay, cool. catch you soon. Bye. Bye. Hate that guy. Anyway, um, so that was uh, that was Steve and David's insights, and uh, we kind of went longer on that than I normally would plan to with a phone call because I'm never quite sure if it's a. Uh, if it sounds very good, but I mean, looking at the, I don't know what it is, but the thing, the little chart thing that moves a whole bunch, it seemed to move pretty well. It was matching my voice, so it can't be that bad, right? Surely not. So I'm just going to find my notes here that I made. Oh, that's my Buffy Season 3 notes, which is fucking enormous. Um, The Phantom Menace. Right, a few things that I wanted to drop on you in note form. It seems awfully quiet now. I'm so won't we, so won't we, I'm won't we, a won. Yeah, I'm not not much of a singer. So yeah, at the start of the film, there's a there's a part when they when Obi Wan and Qui Gon go to the uh, the, the spaceship uh, to initiate the the talks um, to try and stop the blockade of Naboo, and. Um, at a point when they walk onto the ship, Obi Wan says that he senses he senses something elsewhere, perhaps on Naboo. Um, and I wondered because Qui Gon kind of says, "Ah, oh, pay it no mind. It's, it's you know whatever. Focus on the moment." I wonder if Obi Wan was sensing, perhaps, Jar Jar Binks. Because I am firmly believing that George R. Biggs was meant to be the... I mean, George Lucas has said that George R. is the key. I mean, to the, the key to what? What, merch sales? No, you wouldn't say that. Just makes... That doesn't make sense. I really do think George R. was meant to be the, the Phantom Menace and was meant to be the Yoda counterpart who Yoda would fight in Attack of the Clones. And that's why Count Dooku kind of came out of nowhere. I think if they were going to have Count Dooku in it from the start and that was always the plan and it wasn't meant to be something or someone else he probably would have been in the council because that would have given you a good about maybe 10 years I don't know how old Garakin's might be in this he might be 10 and then he's like 17 so 5 plus years for Count Dooku to get pissed off and leave that makes sense if you were sitting on the council just chilling at the back you'd be like oh fuck there's Christopher Lloyd fuck Christopher Lee Christopher Lee Sorry, um, so I Chris really was like Count Dooku was not meant to be the villain for that film, regardless. I think we can all agree upon that. But I, I do wonder if that's what Obi Wan was sensing, or maybe it was the fact that I don't think it could be the, be Palpatine because he was nowhere near that area, and Plagueis was living on Coruscant at that point in time. So I imagine it was probably George R. Binks. That's what I reckon. Um, Interestingly enough, Qui-Gon tells Obi-Wan to ignore some of Yoda's teachings because Obi-Wan says, I, 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 Master Yoda says I should be mindful of my surroundings or something like that. And Qui-Gon's like, yeah, yeah, but also be within the moment. And Qui-Gon is all about being within the moment. And as and Qui-Gon's very powerful, very masculine, you know, and Qui-Gon, Qui-Gon says something, being the fact he's like 6'4", he's a massive man. It's just like, no, this is how we do it because I'm a man. Huh. You're like, okay, you're the boss. but So it kind of gives you an idea of how he would have handled Anakin very firmly, very strongly. And he handles Anakin very firmly throughout the film. You know, he's just like, Anakin, come, let's go. Anakin, I'm going to take your blood. It's fine. It's all good. You know, Anakin, stay in the cockpit. Go. And Anakin does it. Do you think that, I mean, he even questioned Master Yoda. I mean, he was He respected Obi, uh, he, he was, Anakin respected Qui-Gon in a way that he didn't respect um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan is younger. You know, Qui-Gon's meant to be 60. 
Obi-Wan was probably meant to be 20 right about then. Um, maybe younger. I don't think much younger than that. So it, although he was younger, he wasn't... He was still a fucking man compared to compared to Anakin. So he should have respected him, but he, he didn't have respect for male authority anyway, apart from very, very strong male figures like Qui-Gon or the Emperor, people who were, who were very firm, didn't take no shit. Although him and Mace Windu clashed for some reason, basically because Mace Windu took a disliking to him. And um, we discussed that later, of course. <clears throat> so I think it's interesting that Qui-Gon tells Obi-Wan to ignore the teachings of Yoda to a certain extent and follow what he's saying. So that kind of gives you an idea of why Qui-Gon would not be on the council because he would um, contradict probably the other council members. He was meant to be on the council, but he was, you know, too controversial, basically. I, I, mean, I think Qui-Gon's a fantastic character. Really good. I, I know I said it to Steve earlier, but I, I never noticed that Qui-Gon was waving his hand about tricking Boss Nass before. Um, I always thought it was weird that he changed his tune so quick, but I thought that he just... <laughs> I don't know why, when I'm watching a film of Jedi's, I thought he disagreed with Qui-Gon, so that was kind of interesting. Um, I, I wondered, why is why is Anakin got such a big home for a slave? Like, he's shouting, like, Mom, I'm home, you know, and he's having a look for her in all these different rooms, and she's way in the back, and he's got a room where he can build C-3PO, he's got a bit at the back where he can make a speeder, there's no one else hanging around. Didn't look like the dingiest area, I mean, for a slave, like, it, it looked like, like Aunt Peru's house, it looked like a regular home, so, it didn't seem that bad. Their slavery was not, didn't seem that much of an oppression against them. And what was she doing all day, just in the house? I mean, she, I know she was fixing something, but she would surely not even be home sometimes if she was a slave. I don't know, it just seemed like, yeah, we're slaves. But that was it, they didn't want to show any of the pain, any any issues, and I know we mentioned it's kind of a kid's film, but it could have done with that. I mean, I, my kid's films had fucking heartache and pain in them, you know, and you'd have to hold back the tears in case your dad saw you and thought you are a girly man. So like, I think the kids then could have, could have done with some of that, you know. I know the millennials; they they could need to do some uh, some manning up. No offense, millennials, but you, some of you are kind of pussies, right? Um, what else we got here? <laughs> yeah, another part which I thought was interesting was the um, twice C three PO comments on Jar Jar's oddness, and all the all the droids don't really like Jar Jar; don't gravitate towards him too much, and uh, are suspicious of him. Because I suggest he's not able to use his Jedi mind... Well, sorry, his Sith mind powers on them. I mean... Uh, Qui-Gon reluctantly takes takes him on. But even in that scene, after very quickly establishing that Jar Jar is an idiot, and he's just standing there and lets, him, lets Qui-Gon run into him, which is super weird, um, he does this masterful, you know, athletic jump into a lake. Which, I don't know, there's, there's quite a few fighting, well, there's quite a few scenes where he's, he's um, dancing around and jumping about and he does the fight scene at the end where he's kind of got this laser gun robot attached to him, sorry, droid, and he's jumping about the place and shooting other droids with the, 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 the robot attached to his foot. Um, that's it's kind of like the Drunken Master stuff, if you ever watched the old Jackie Chan films. Um... Yeah, it's just it's just so freaking close. There's a nice little bit where um, Anakin, um, Watto, and Qui Gon are talking in the shop, and Qui Gon leaves, and Watto insults him to Anakin, and Anakin just stands there and folds his arms in that perfect way that Darth Vader used to do, and it was really, really quite nice. It's just a little thing, and there's a few bits and pieces where Jake Lloyd is actually okay, you know, and being a child actor in the nineties. I think they just, I don't know if the child actors were hit or miss or if it was the directors who weren't too fussed about using them. They just kind of get them in and get them out and just salvage what they could. And it's okay, people expect the child actor to not be great. But there's a couple of bits in it where he's not awful, you know. Um, 
What else have we got? Oh yeah, there's when there when before we have the the fight with Darth Maul, um, and General Panaka and Padme are running about the place shooting. Oh, I can't remember Newt Gunray and his all his all his droids and various other like battle droids and shit like that. Um, when they go to exit one of the the hallways, they shoot through the window and they travel up with the the. The grappling hooks, you know, like that Batman and Robin style from the seventies. Well, Panaka shoots the window like fucking seventeen times. It's like, you're like fucking hell, dude. Did you need to like fucking wreck the window that much? Like, I'm pretty sure a couple of shots would have done it. Surely, in a battle situation, you want to conserve your ammo. And very quickly after that scene, it's one hour and fifty six minutes in and twenty seconds just after Padme. grabs the guns out of her out of the armrest on her throne. She throws the guns to the various uh, various soldiers and to Panaka. They shoot the rest of the droids and capture Newt Gunray. I'm sure that's his name, right? Um she walks round from the chair, she slips. Look at her back right foot I wanna say. She slips and just keeps on walking and it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that floor was pretty polished though, so can't slag her too much. I think that's most of the most of the the notes I've got here. I think we've covered mostly everything else. Something that people ask was why why did uh, why why does Darth Maul beat Qui Gon but not Obi Wan? <clears throat> and basically, the reason that Qui Gon loses is because well, it's a few reasons. Qui Gon is sixty at this point in time. He doesn't look it, and you wouldn't tell it, but Use a Jedi can use the Force to <clears throat> bolster their strength, and 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 keep them healthier. And obviously, he's a he's a fit saw. So he's gonna be a fit individual because he's he's a warrior, and he'll train regularly, look after himself, probably get the best health edu- uh, health treatments, and he'll have the best health education. Being part of the Jedi Order, I would imagine that sixty. Like I train a lot of people who are on their way to sixty, and they're pretty darn fit. Um, I would suggest that, you know, with this being a, a, a world where there's laser guns and such, and there is a, a theory that this is part of the future of Earth, and Earth is a planet within the Star Wars system, but this is like thousands of years in the future. I can't remember where that, how that ties in, but I'll maybe look it up and drop it in there. But that's why the, the, the galaxy, they can say, like, we're sitting ducks here, or make some reference about dogs or bats or something like that. I can't remember how it goes and now I'm just rambling, so I'll just move on. But um yeah, Qu- Qui-Gon is sixty, but he's probably more like a super fit and healthy forty year old with the power of the force, um in our our world. And uh well I mean I'm I'm almost thirty five and I'm pretty fit and healthy, so you know, I I think if I had the force powers I'd be in pretty good nick as well. So you imagine that uh, and he goes to fight Darth Maul, who is a very young. Um, he, he's he's just freshly uh, freshly uh, trained. I don't know what age he is. I wonder if it says here on Wikipedia. Well, I don't want to spend ages looking for it. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. But uh, he is very young. I know that for a fact. Wait, let me just let's just, let's just a wee quick search, shall I? Um, there's the search in, engine. Darth Maul. Um, Zabrak, that's what it is. He's a, a Zabrak. I can never remember the name. I always want to say Zabrath. That's so not right. I don't know if it'll say his age. I don't really use Wikipedia that often. Ooh, uh, age, age, age? Age? No age. Okay, but he's he's certainly young when he appears in the Phantom Menace, and um, he's a very young, athletic, powerful uh, assassin more than a Sith Lord. Um, he's trained as a weapon more than anything else, and he specializes in the physical form of fighting, whereas. Uh, Darth Sidious, for example, he specialises in, well, 
deception and mind control and distortion of reality to a certain extent you'll be able to hide himself and he specializes in more of the, the I don't want to say magical aspects whereas Maul specializes in the physical aspects and that's where they both kind of focus on but then Sidious is so powerful he can bolster himself to a point where he's much more athletic and powerful than Maul ever was <laughs> though Maul obviously does all this sort of stunts so bada bing bada boom um, so you've got someone who's who's young, athletic, powerful, very, very uh, physically strong um, and strong in the Force. And obviously the dark side, you become a Sith, can be stronger than a Jedi Master in a lot of ways and will maybe beat them in a fight, even though they're relatively spent less time training because that the path to the dark side is, is, a, is, is a quicker one to power. You become stronger quicker. Um, you make sacrifices that usually ages you and obviously you need to use your anger to fuel yourself so if you're always angry that actually being angry all the time takes a lot of effort as much as being chilled out all the time but it's, it's not that difficult to be to become tired from being angry always but you build up that that power that very if because he's so aggressive um and he's went through very painful trials because of she Palpatine. So you're looking at a very raw, powerful, young individual, purely trained as an assassin and fighter, and you've got a master who is battle hardened, is is a, is a large man and, and, and strong, but um his his fighting style is form four, which is um Ataru and is a really athletic style. That's the same one that Yoda uses and I presume that if Qui Gon was younger, he would jump about the place the same way Yoda does. It's very, uh, it's very aggressive acrobatic style. Um, but Qui Gon being older, he didn't use the flips and the jumps so much. He conserved it, but he would still, he, he would fight in a very aggressive manner, and that's that's what he tried to do to Maul. He tried to overwhelm him and push him into a small space so that the double-ended lightsaber wouldn't work. Unfortunately, small spaces aren't great for Ataru fighters because they like to change positions a lot and that's one of the things that they use to confuse their opponent and it's almost a defence mechanism. So Ataru has not actually got great defence when you take out all the jumping and flipping, which Qui-Gon wasn't doing. So they abuse that, the, their athleticism as their defence. Without that, his defence is quite weak in comparison, whereas Maul uses Form 7, which is... Um, very aggressive and if I remember correctly it's kind of a mixture of all the forms of lightsaber combat I want to say but I could be wrong it's kind of um, I'm sure it is let me just go back and look at this real quick well it says here on Wikipedia it's described as the most vicious form of lightsaber combat and was said to involve significant internal focus on the part of the user um, so this is Juyo Form 7, otherwise sometimes known as Vapad, which was a um, style sort of created by um, Mace Windu. Um, it's very aggressive, very powerful, um, and if you don't have a good defence against it, you're not going to do so well. I mean, Mace Windu, to, for some people, beat Palpatine, like, and actually beat him, but that's something to do with Vapad and reversing his, his own... Um, his own evil energy against him. That's going to be another talk for another time. But um, that's why that's why Qui Gon lost. He tried to he tried to use the surroundings against Maul, which backfired, and then he was boxed in, which gave Maul enough room to use his lightsaber, but not give use the lightsaber length, but not give Qui Gon enough room to back away from him and change tactics constantly, and he he didn't use his athletic style anymore, so therefore he kind of lost. Also, he's, he's older. The reason that um, Obi-Wan beat Darth Maul is because Obi-Wan is um, uses a really powerful defensive style of fighting. It's Form 3. Obi-Wan... Uh, 
had this in my head. But we kind of an hour and a half in. I didn't take a note on it because I'm a fucking dick. Um, what is it? Sorisu, that's it. So that's kind of it's more of your blocking style, and you're more of your anticipating opponents' moves and reacting to them. Which, when you're fighting a really aggressive opponent like Darth Maul or like Anakin, really works. When you fight someone that's um, more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more laid back, a little bit more measured, um, like Count Dooku. That's why he had troubles with Count Dooku because he, Count Dooku was, it, it, it's somewhere in between. He's kind of he attacks, but he also defends, which, you know, if if. Um, if you watch Attack of the Clones, which you will obviously for next week, you'll see that Obi-Wan can't really he can't sit back and wait for him to come at him that often because Dooku will defend and kind of use a little bit more skill than just brute force. Um, but the reason he was able to beat Maul is partly because his lightsaber style marries up well against a really aggressive fighter also he was angry and used a little bit of the darkness within him to go full full on an attack ball really harshly but he still couldn't defeat him there and and if in a way if he hadn't have been um, pushed down the, the shaft down the shaft oh my it's not a mine shaft but I don't know what it is but down the the, the shaft let's just call it the shaft and holding on there and if Maul had just fought him on flat ground Maul probably would have vanquished him over time or just generally overwhelmed him because of his power disparity to Obi-Wan not being able to keep up his anger and attack him because that would have his fighting style does not denote that that would have been a bit more of a surprise than probably Maul was thinking um, based on his fighting style and his personality and what form he uses because Maul would have already figured out that he was form 3 so when he comes to attacking him, you know, it's not to say you don't practice anything else. But the, the reason he lost is because he had the high ground. And <laughs> if you've got the high ground and you're being arrogant and not paying attention, that's a bad thing. If you've got the high ground and you're paying attention and you're not giving your you're not standing too close to your opponent so they can jump over you, then that's a good thing for you. So basically it was Maul's arrogance that let Obi Wan beat him. And the arrogance is a trait of, of the dark side, um, the way you indulge your own ego. So, in a way, Obi Wan is the perfect person to fight a dark side user because they're usually arrogant and very aggressive, whereas he's kind of chill and laid back. Qui Gon's style is not the best one for that because it's aggressive and athletic, but not aggressive enough, and he's not got the raw power to. to to take care of business. Although I do think that he would be able to beat Obi-Wan, potentially. Um, I never think of Obi-Wan as being that powerful, but then he beat Darth Maul, who is a fucking absolute badass, and he beat the Anakin Skywalker at the height of Anakin's power. With, But again, that's down to fighting styles. We'll talk about that at some other point, long form. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that was uh, some of the things about Phantom Menace. Uh, I think we spoke about things we liked, disliked, but just to recap, we all agree we like the score. Jewel of Fates is fantastic. A lot of the casting is fantastic. Some of it's a bit me, me, me. Don't really like Padme so much. Um, Natalie Portman, sorry, Jake Lloyd was, he's a child actor. Nah. Um, but a lot of the voice actors were really good. They really worked. Um, the visual effects are groundbreaking for their time and mostly stand up pretty well today. Um, that fight scene at the end, even when Darth Maul fights Qui-Gon Jinn at the start, was brilliant. And that lets you see what sort of effort that took, because Qui-Gon Jinn was fucking wrecked after that. He was sweating, he was out of breath. So that lets you know how that fight would have went on later on. You know, how much, how tired he was. He was tired, basically. He was a human um, at 60 fighting, you know, a prodigy. Even, maybe if he was 40, he would have managed it. Um... So that's good. Obviously, all Star Wars stuff's always good. Padme, the costume designs are good. Things didn't like so much. Padme's, a little, sorry, Natalie Portman's a little bit. Mm, yeah. Um, when she's being Padme, 
not so good when she's being the queen of Naboo. Mm, good. Um, oh, Ian McDermott, always an absolute joy, although maybe a fraction on the nose, but probably just trying to let everyone know, like, this is definitely him. Like, this is definitely the guy. And they're like, okay, he's him. That's the guy. I, I know that's, that's the emperor. Ooh, can't wait. Not things not to like the fact they didn't pull the trigger on Jar Jar. Um, it's kind of like we said, it's a mixture of a political film and a kids' film, and neither kind of work or mesh. So it's a little bit, it's just a little bit meh, a little bit beige, a little bit bland, a little bit boring at some points, without so much badness or goodness. Um, so I think, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go for the seven, just like um, just like Steve did. I hope you uh, enjoyed me going deeper on the lightsaber forms. Um, it's something that really interests me. I would love to have like a chart of them, or maybe there's a good book out there someone could recommend that's got that. I don't want to be reading phrases. I want a book with nice pictures and shit, you know, where I can, like, two pages dedicated to Cerisus, two pages dedicated to Vipad. Boom. Here's people that use it. Like someone, you know, a picture book. Keep it simple for me. Um, I think we're done. And the Wonder Woman podcast, oh, things have just been messy this month because I've been away working and doing various acting gigs and then David's had some stuff and then we had to squeeze in Blade Runner and things got messy and um, he's not managed to watch it and, you know, whatever. But I've literally reviewed Wonder Woman when it came out in June. So we'll do Justice League and then I'll link them all together and that'll, that will be the DCEU uh, review series, which is kind of the Superman... Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad re-reviews that we did didn't do so well in terms of plays, so I suppose you guys, if you want to listen to it, you just go back and listen to the old ones. That's also kind of convinced me that maybe we don't bother so much redoing Wonder Woman when I just did it a few months ago. So <clears throat> it's not a, like, oh, we love Marvel better or anything like that. It just happens that I started the podcast when almost all the DC films came out. So that's just kind of the way it is. And then we kind of got a little bit busy and things got a little bit crazy, you know, with our schedules. Um, yeah, I think that's all the house cleaning I've got to do. Go to the buffgeekpodcastblog.wordpress.com to check out our website. that has got a whole bunch of stuff there. It's also got links for Alpha Fitness. It's got so many good things. I'm really, uh, really pushing, um, not really pushing, really active on Instagram right now. Oh, do you know what I am? I'm pushing, I'm pushing my shit. I am shilling my product, although I can't uh, bring it up right now for some reason. But uh, if you would like to follow me, you could follow me on Twitter, if Twitter works. Yes, it does work almost, almost, at the Buff Geek. Or you can follow the official page on Twitter, which is Buff Geek Podcast. That's the full team page, if you don't just want my banter, although we kind of share it all. And on Instagram, which seems to just not be working right now, pretty sure about the Buff Geek as well. Come back and listen to the Buffy podcast. It's real fun. And next week we're going to review Attack of the Clones, which has its good points and its bad points. It's not the best Star Wars film. But maybe the third one is, oh yes, I love me some Revenge of the Sith. Catch you all soon. Hashtag the Buff Geek Podcast. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have our revenge. <laughs>